This is a video presentation of a cardiac MRI study. The patient's height is 170 centimeters and weight is 55 kilos. This is important to calculate the body surface area. The patient is 19 years old and suspected to have ARVD. Three ECG electrodes are placed on the chest after shaving. The patient is entering the cardiac MR suite and is asked to lie down on the table. The ECG electrodes are connected to a Bluetooth device and there is a respiratory bellow for respiratory monitoring. An 8-channel cardiac MR coil has been placed over his chest. The patient is covered with a blanket and is placed inside the gantry. Respiratory monitoring and ECG monitoring is done. The ECG monitoring is done to look at the RR interval. There is distortion of the ECG by the magnetic field. If the patient is able to hold the breath, the study is performed with breath hold. Sagittal, coronal and axial images are obtained using these three localizers and SSFP true axial images are obtained through the thorax from the apex of the thorax to the diaphragm. This initial sequence is good for looking at the mediastinal structures, the heart, vascular structures and the lung fields. The right atrium and right ventricle are moderately dilated. The wall of the RV shows crenations. The RVOT is dilated. The MPA is normal in size. On the true axial view, a line is drawn through the left atrium, the center of the mitral valve and the left ventricular apex. To obtain an approximate two-chamber view, in this approximate two-chamber view, a line is drawn through the left atrium, center of the mitral valve and the LV apex. To obtain an approximate four-chamber view, on the approximate four-chamber view, multiple lines are drawn perpendicular to the interventricular septum. To obtain approximate short axis views, on the midline short axis view, a line is drawn from the RV apex to the anterolateral papillary muscle 
of the mitral valve to obtain a true four chamber view. It is called the true four chamber view because the axis is along the true four chamber axis of the heart. While planning on the short axis view at the basal level, care must be taken not to include the iota, otherwise a five chamber view will be obtained where the iota is also visualized. Note that the yellow circle represents the iota and the yellow line represents the planning line. The planning line touches the wall of the iota but does not pass through it. A true two-chamber view plan is planned on the true four-chamber view by drawing a line through the left atrium, mitral valve and the LV apex. Since the pathology is on the right side of the heart, a true two-chamber view of the right side is obtained by drawing a line through the RA, tricuspid valve and RV apex. This is the right atrium, the right ventricle and the RVOT. Look at the planning for the true short axis. Lines are drawn perpendicular to the interventricular septum. Slice thickness is 6 mm and 10 slices are drawn from the base to the apex. True axial cine images are taken from the base of the heart to the apex in all patients suspected with ARVD. This is because the RV free wall is best seen in this sequence as compared to other sequences of the heart. This is the SVC, the ascending iota the RVOT, the right pulmonary artery and the descending iota. This is the dilated RVOT, the right atrium and right ventricle are moderately dilated. There are crenations on the RV wall. There is focal aneurysmal outpouching and areas of dyskinesia. Next, we move to the planning of the LVOT. A line is drawn through the center of the aortic valve and the left ventricle. Note the left atrium, left ventricle and iota. In the second LVOT view, a line is drawn to the iota on the first LVOT view, the left ventricle and the iota are well visualized on this view. Note the planning for the RVOT view on the true axial sequence, a line is drawn through the main pulmonary artery to obtain images of the right ventricle, RVOT and main pulmonary artery. After the routine sequences, gadolinium is injected at a dose of 0 0.1 
to 0.2 millimoles per kg body weight. In this patient, 10 ml of gadolinium is used. Perfusion images are acquired from the start of the IV infusion. Four short axis views are taken and this is being planned right now. Contrast has been injected. And is now appearing in the right ventricle. The left ventricle is still dark. Slowly the contrast appears in the left ventricle and enhancement of the myocardium is noted. This is a rest perfusion study. When the same study is performed after injecting adenosine, a stress study is obtained to look for myocardial ischemia. Following this, a delayed hyperenhancement scan is done 10 minutes after the injection of gadolinium. A time of inversion scan is obtained. A single midline short axis image is taken. And a series of different time of inversion images are acquired. Initially, the myocardium and blood are bright. Slowly, the blood turns black. And after that, the myocardium turns black. The second image after the myocardium turns black is chosen as the optimal time of inversion. In this study, it is approximately 340 milliseconds. The value of 340 milliseconds is entered and delayed hyperenhancement images are taken in all three planes. This is the planning of the short axis, where slices are taken perpendicular to the interventricular septum. Both magnitude and PSIR images are obtained. These are the magnitude images and these are the PSIR images. This is the planning for the four-chamber plane. The line passes through the RV apex and the anterolateral papillary muscle. Magnitude as well as face sensitive inversion recovery images are obtained. Following which a delayed hyperenhancement scan is done in the two chamber view. A line is drawn through the left atrium, center of the mitral valve and LV apex. The two chamber view is obtained in both magnitude and PSIR images. Note the optimal nulling the myocardium. With this sequence, the study is over. The images are transferred to the workstation for calculation of the RV and LV function.